welcome back. Now, we know actress Rosie Marcel as surgeon Jack Naylor in hospital drama Holby City, but what you may not know is that behind the scenes, Rosie has been facing a terrifying ordeal. For just over a year, Rosie was stalked by an obsessed female fan who threatened to rape and kill her, leaving Rosie fearing for her life. And she joins us now. We had no idea. Till you read a story like this, absolutely no idea that no, you were going no through idea. this. And you said for a period of time this wrecked your life. Yeah, I said she's wrecked my life for a good two years, I'd say. Mm. I, you know, it's, it's kind of at the end of it now, but none of us really hold out much hope that she won't carry on eventually. Well, you joined Holby in 2005 and loved the show, loved the fans, yeah. outside, side autographs if yeah. there were people outside. Absolutely. So is that where you first met Sarah Rumbelow? Yes. Yeah, she was just kind of one of those fans that would turn up in their holidays and things like that and they'd stand outside and you'd stop and I always want to stop for everybody. I always sign all of my autographs. I always send back all of my fan mail and she was there and she was just one of them and she was very over familiar and um, used to call me sweetie and darling and things like that which I found quite uncomfortable. I always, always wanted, wanted a hug, to hug as Yeah, well. absolutely. And she was just there a lot but I didn't think there was anything particularly, you know, wrong with her. I just thought she looks a little sensitive and you know, mm. we'll be nice, and, and that was it, really. So, so when did the... Because initially you had no clue that it was actually her that was behind no, the, she, the, the yeah. uh, abuse. That's right, she blamed someone else, yeah. So what, how did it start? When did, it get, when did she cross the line? I think what happened was she fell out with this other person that she was trying to blame. Um, and so to get closer to me, she pretended to be this person and started to send all of these horrible... The first thing I got, my sister got it on Twitter, was... Um, a threat saying the next time I see your sister I'm gonna rape her and okay. so my sister sent this to me and so we kind of started the, the ball rolling with the police and everything there but it took us a little while to work out that it was actually her behind everything she um, emailed your husband didn't she mm, so yeah. how did she manage to, to get the email just how did that work uh, there's a wonderful book called The Knowledge, and if you're an assistant director, I'm sure some people here know about it, that, you know, you put your email address and stuff on that, and she was just very clever, and she just found stuff quite easily and, and just started to email him, and then she worked out my email address and emailed Before me you know as well. she had contact to you. Mm. Um, yeah, at the time, I mean, your, your marriage at the time was going through a bit of a yeah. tricky patch anyway, and then having this extra pressure and strain from her mm. and these constant emails, I mean, she... She would email things about you having an affair or terrible things that were going on in your life. Yeah. That just put extra strain on the marriage. Yeah, absolutely. I, it was definitely something that contributed to the to the end of my marriage, I would say. I'd come home every evening, you know, and, and poor Scott, I'd say to him, you know, if there'd been any messages, if there'd been any emails, you know, and I could just tell just by looking at him whether something had happened or whether something had come through. We sort of lived five or six months of our lives before we separated in fear literally of these messages mm. and and not knowing and until you know, that specific time when you deduced okay actually I think I figured out who it is now not knowing really where they were coming from yeah well I thought it was a, a, a male fan yeah. I thought that there's a male fan who's obsessed with me and he's found out the names of my animals and where I walk my dogs and you know the area that I live in and he's threatening to rape me and kill me and come to my work and giving me specific times and dates that I'm going to meet my death um, so it was hideous and at the time the law I mean the law changed recently yeah, didn't it so it, did. it changed um, it changed stalking into being a crime whereas before it was just harassment so at the beginning when you were going to the police with this sort of bunch of evidence that you've gathered yourself mm. these emails these yeah. Facebook posts these Twitters tweets um, there wasn't really anything they could do no. could they they could only caution her they could caution her they could bring her in for questioning she maintained throughout that it wasn't her that she was being set up that it was this other person and so they'd let her out again and so she'd just continue so how did it come to the, the that day when the police ended up in her house she she met well my sister made a mistake of replying to one of her tweets and one of the tweets was you know you're gonna die on the, the 5th of January and Rosie's gonna die on the 20th of November and my sister went oh sorry can't do the 5th can you make it 4th which kind of was very funny but it also upset her quite a lot, a lot and she made a mistake and said I'm gonna be at the studios tomorrow at 12 o'clock signed this other chap but then she turned up at the studios at 12 o'clock so we kind of had enough to sort of go right we're gonna take you in and we're gonna take your IT finally and that's what they did and it turned out they found every single email so they went into her house they went into her house her. they went into her room which was 
plastered with news cuttings of me and pictures of me and gifts that I'd apparently given her and emails that I'd apparently sent her because she also opened up an email account in another in my name mm. um, and sent herself emails so she would she would always cover herself when she'd come to the studios and go Rosie emailed me look um, and they found all of it. They found the lot. And they took she managed to con her way in, didn't she? She even got inside. She, she got inside only because I said I wanted to talk to her. Um, they got her in the security hut because I thought perhaps if I chat to her, she'll stop and what did, she's what doing. And what did she say to you when you confronted her? She said it wasn't her. Mm -hmm. she, and she started to take off this necklace that um, I'd apparently given her. And I said, don't take that off. I didn't give it to you. I want you to stop. You've got to leave me alone. And then as I left, she went after me and she assaulted a police officer and... That was kind of the beginning of the end for her. Sort of. Well, she pleaded guilty at St Albans Crown Court mm. to putting the person in fear of violence by harassment and was sentenced to two and a half years. That's an, a, a lengthy uh, uh, um, sentence because she broken her bail conditions already. Right. She was she yeah. was given uh, she was let out uh, of remand basically for five or six weeks until sentencing and within that five or six weeks mm. she broke all of her restraining orders she started stalking me again she kept images of me she went on the internet she downloaded images of me mm. um, and so yeah they got and you were in, in court yes and you say no, no sympathy whatsoever here I I feel bad that she has obvious problems however and judge Plumstead uh, the the magistrate we had uh, on the case basically turned and said I understand that you know you, you are ADHD and you have Asperger's, etc. But you knew right from wrong. Otherwise, you wouldn't have tried tried to blame someone the entire two years. Mm. So therefore, she knew right from wrong because she's always tried to pin it on someone else. And I think that's where he sort of lost his temper. And you know, he gave her a chance. He gave her a chance to do good, and she didn't. She broke the restraining order. Do you worry about when she comes out? Because I mean, it is two and a half years. So you've got sort of this two and a half year. It's not because it's immediately halved. She's already served 10 months on remand, uh, so she's actually only going to be in for five months. And when she comes out, I'm in no doubt that she'll do it again. Nor are the police. None of us. None of us doubt it. Well, the, the, we, I mean, obviously we, can't, we don't know that for a fact. No, of course. She may have course. been completely rehabilitated and we may never hopefully hear from her mm, again. I hope so. Um, what you do know is that, and one of the reasons that you're here, uh, to support this new legislation, yes. but also um, because you are having difficulty in shutting down a fake Facebook account. Three. Three face Facebook accounts. Uh, they she, were set up by her? They, she opened one in my married name, she opened one up for my sister, and she opened one up for my ex-husband. And for a year of trying, you know, the magistrates have petitioned and the police have tried to contact Facebook for a year and sent countless emails. We've not had a single response. Well, Facebook say uh, if you try to use Facebook under a fake identity, you will be removed when reported to Facebook. Facebook has several technical systems dedicated to locating and removing fraudulent profiles. Well, they're still on there, and that's a year later. So, you know, this is a multi-billion dollar company we're talking about here. They must be able to put some security settings in place mm. where people have to prove who they are. We have national insurance numbers. Mm. Everybody has a social security number. Just do it. It's going to save everybody a lot of time and a lot of energy and a lot of heartache. Well, you're not on Facebook, are you? Because because uh, no, you I, got, not I got shut off. down <laughs> for being I, yeah for being a Holly Willoughby imposter mm. uh, at one point. So apparently, the real Holly Willoughby complained, and then I got shut down. I have yeah yeah. That happened very quickly. <laughs> uh, Twitter, uh, Twitter say impersonation is against our policy and accounts that are reported to, uh, to us that violate this policy may be suspended. They've recently mm. updated abuse policy to recognise repeated direct attacks on individuals of potential offence. Um, I, I yeah. hope that, that um, this is the end of it for you now and hope that you can carry on, mm. your, uh, yeah. carry on your life. Let's hope so. Yeah. With Ben. With Ben. Lovely Ben. Yes. He's your new, your new guy. <laughs> yes. Good. Well, uh, uh, but hopefully that's, um, that's that. And thank you very much. Great, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank, thank you. Very you. Very and hopefully that those, by mentioning it, you'll finally get those accounts that's closed. Yes, down. definitely. Do something, very yeah. painful for you. If anything we've just been talking about with Rosie has affected you, there are helplines available on the This Morning website. It's itv.com forward slash this morning. Right, we're back uh, with Soap Gossip after the break.